Uh, the gentleman yields back. The chair now recognizes Dr. Ruiz for five minutes for questions. Thank you. Thank you all to the witnesses who are here and for your heroic work um, and for your service to our country during this public health emergency. I appreciate that you are taking the lessons learned through this unprecedented experience and are applying them to future pandemic responses. Lessons learned means things that we must take a look at the things that we did well and then the things that need improvement. And we need to be honest in the scope and the proportionality of those good works and the things that need improvement as well. For example, let me remind everybody that we have lost one million people in one million of our citizens, residents, mostly our most vulnerable individuals, but at the same time, we saved 3.2 plus million lives with the efforts that were done. We must look at why our nation had the highest death rates than any other nation and, uh, and tackle those difficult questions in order to prevent that from happening. One thing for sure is that this pandemic shined a spotlight on what we already know, which is that there are glaring disparities in access to healthcare based on where a person lives, color of their skin, zip code, or how much money they make. And so for those who live perhaps in safer areas with the resources to stay safer, you know, the issue of the pandemic may not have been a high risk for them, and they are uh, mostly concerned of the enormous, enormous inconvenience that this pandemic unfortunately gave to everybody. But if you're living in a very uh, concentrated household with people who are sick and don't have access to health care, uh, and you know that the risk is much higher in your community, then the precautions that the CDC and other experts are, are saying is life-saving. And so that is why this is so important, because we must understand in the public health world, as a physician, you must ask the question, who are the most vulnerable, the most likely to die, and how are you going to prevent them from dying? But it seems like our approach here is very malaligned, uh, and, um, and we need to really uh, understand this issue. In my district, for example, the Coachella Valley Volunteers in Medicine and the Desert Healthcare District in Southern California work to address these issues to run testing sites and vaccine clinics in the least served areas of the community, the hardest hit, hardest to reach, for the homeless, under the bridges, for the farm workers, in the workplaces, for the most vulnerable uninsured at their churches. We took care to the people and it helped together with my office and even myself rolling up my sleeve, inoculating, conducting the testing in, in Spanish and English, we met people where they were, reducing barriers that people often face in getting the care that they need, like a lack of transportation, the ability to take time off of work. And I applaud the Biden administration for implementing programs to help level the playing field through the HRSA and the CDC programs that distributed vaccines directly to our community health centers and the retail pharmacies who service the very communities that traditionally have lower access to care. And this was a response because of governors who did not follow the equity rule, did not believe in, in this approach, and did not allow the monies to go to the hardest to reach areas. As a member of this committee and as the ranking member of the select committee on the coronavirus pandemic, I truly want to understand what we have learned about best practices in addressing inequities and how the agencies here today are applying those lessons to close the gap in our pandemic response and ensure equal access to care for all. Dr. Walensky, what did the CDC learn about the tools needed to address health disparities in the COVID-19 response, and how is CDC incorporating these lessons into a strategic reorganization to make equity a, a strategic part of our effort in future healthcare uh, pandemics? Thank you, Dr. Ruiz. You, you know what we learned in COVID-19, but we, what we've known in infectious diseases all along, which is infectious diseases go to the most vulnerable. Um, that is how they work, and that is how they, um, that is, 
it, it happens in HIV, it happens in hepatitis C, it happened in COVID-19, it happens in influenza. Um, we knew that that was going to be the case and we immediately put out resources once we had them in order to address exactly as you did. Go to the community-based organizations, go to those trusted messengers, make sure you have um, crossed the divides where, where people might not be reached because we know that it's going to be the elderly, the vulnerable, those in multi-generational households, those who when you say you should isolate actually don't have any place to isolate to. Right? And so that was the work of CDC. We have developed, uh, eight weeks after I came into office, I declared racism a serious public health threat. We developed an office of equity. That equity office now in our reorganization announced two weeks ago will be uh, uh, reporting immediately into the immediate office of the director. And we're um, looking forward to continuing those efforts to address equity issues. Thank you. Gentlemen.